Good morning. My name is Marcia Troop. I'm with Shepherd's Heart Fellowship. I'm sharing with you today from 100 Days of Love by Thomas Carrot, and we are ready for day 63. Day 63 is about great joy and great love. The memory verse is from Philippians 1 7, the first part. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love. The prayer, we are thankful for the healing comfort we find in the love of God. And the affirmation, today I will share joyfully love. And the scripture lesson is from Luke 4. This is about Jesus, verse 14 to 18. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in the synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was the custom. He stood to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me, to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. Meditation to go with this. Great joy and great love are the companions in a dedicated life that practices holy habits and healthy living. People have sought joy in every way that the mind could imagine. The wisest people I know keep coming back to the Bible and to the life of Christ. They know that in him and through him are the joys that through all time abide. As we walked away from the tomb in Lenin in Moscow, I thought of all the sorrow, shame, death, and evil this man helped to bring and perpetuate in the world. How different when you think of Jesus. This is the one divine person who never traveled more than 200 miles from where he was born, but has brought more joy and love into the world than any other person who ever touched this planet. In Christ is our true hope for love and joy, now and forever. Okay, day 64 is love life. And the memory verse comes from 1 Peter 10, the first part again, for whoever would love life. We'll get the rest of that in the scripture. The prayer, help us to love the giver of life so that we may properly love to live. The affirmation, today I give my life in the love of others. And our scripture lesson comes from 1 Peter 3, 8 through 12. Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And the meditation that goes with this, one of the finest virtues of the Christian faith is its emphasis on the love of life. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The Christian religion teaches self-denial, but it does not teach life denial. To love life means to make life count for the most in the service to God and others. The Bible teaches that if we try to save our life, we will lose it. But if we give it away, then we will find life. There are many people who never learn to live because they never learn to love. I never met a man who thought life was not worth living who really, truly knew how to love as a Christian. The love for physical life is the strongest urge in the human body. The love for spiritual life 
is the highest hope of the human heart. That's it for love life. Day 65 is about loveless words and wordless loving. That's an interesting topic. Memory verse, 1 John 3, 18. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. The prayer, save us, our Father, from letting our love become sounding brass. The affirmation, today I will witness through my words and deeds that love is real. The scripture lesson comes from 1 John 3, 18 to 23. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The meditation to go with us is, a careless word can cut a heart to the quick and make a lifetime enemy. A silent love that is sincere and consistent is far more eloquent and effective than the gushy sentiment of a loud, shallow praise. The Bible says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. There is a kind way to speak the truth, and thus you help the person to whom you speak. When people are frustrated and angry, sometimes the sacrament of silent love is both healing and helpful. Don't you imagine Jesus just looked love toward his disciples, toward the sick? toward his enemies many times. People read love in his face, and they knew he cared. Your face is the window through which your heart of love can shine to brighten the world. Keep smiling. And that's it for today, and we'll see you next week.